Back in March of 2024, I took a spin over to Bookspieler Records in Montpelier, Vermont to check out a recent arrival of a classic metal vinyl collection for sale. I even got first dibs on buying them. So we're going to take a look at what was available as well as the 20 albums that I chose to buy. Some good titles here, so stick around. probably goes without saying that there were some killer records in that collection that you just saw. In case you need the story, someone sold these to Nate, who is one of the co-owners of Bookspieler Records. Nate is a big metal fan himself, but is also a really good guy in that he wanted his friends and people he likes to have the chance to buy some of these records before he kept whatever was left. Actually, he got first dibs on this collection, which is also really cool of Nate. So I took the city bus down to Montpelier, which is about a 75-minute ride with stops, and spent a good hour or so scrutinizing every last record for condition, basically grading them in my head. And I gotta say, whoever previously owned these records took really good care of them. So, in some way, I have both that guy as well as Nate to thank for the albums I'm gonna show you. Speaking of which, I did buy 20 of them. Uh, I went to the shop with an already fixed budget of $500. I would have gone higher had I not needed to bankroll my upcoming vacation, but $500 is a reasonable amount to spend on such a cool collection. My grand total on this one was $471.70, so pretty close to $500. Anyways, let's get to the records. First up is the third studio album from American heavy metal band Riot. This is Fire Down Under, released in 1981 by Elektra Records. So this is likely their most well-known album featuring the incredibly catchy opening track Swords and Tequila. And although they are an American band, they definitely had some musical similarities to the new wave of British heavy metal scene of the late 1970s and early 1980s. In fact, British DJ Neil Kay, who was instrumental in promoting the Nawabum bands of the time, also promoted Riot and pretty much introduced them to the Brits. In response to that exposure, Riot did dedicate the track flashbacks on this album to Neil Kay specifically. It's a very cool. Back of the record for you there. Great album. If you've never heard it before, you really should. Uh, it is on the early Electro labels here. Very cool. Next is the debut studio album from American heavy metal band King Cobra. This is Ready to Strike, released in 1985 by Capitol Records. So the two sell points for me here, especially when this album was new, that is it had Carmine Apiece on drums, who had just left Ozzy. It also has a lead single, Hunger, which wasn't even written by the band, but rather by Canadian metal band Kickaxe, who did their own version of it for the Transformers soundtrack in 86. In addition to that, Spencer Proffer co-produced and has a lot of writing credit here. 
Proffer was the head of Pasha Records and also produced Quiet Riot's Metal Health album and released that on his label. This record, though, was released through Capitol, which is curious. There's the label there. Anyways, it's a fun album. You should definitely check it out. Next up is the second studio album from American heavy metal band CJSS. This is Praise the Loud, released in 1986 by Leviathan Records. So this is yet another project from guitarist David Chastain. In fact, he is the C in CJSS. Mostly an 80s band with a couple of brief reunions in the 2010s. This was released on Chastain's own Leviathan Records label. Yeah. Though he was previously on Shrapnel, and I'm pretty much a collector of that label's artists, so by extension, I grabbed this. Besides, I love Chastain, the band, so I wanted this too. Next is a second studio album from American heavy metal band Armored Saint. This is Delirious Nomad, released in 1985 by Chrysalis Records. So not my favorite Armored Saint album, and certainly not my favorite Armored Saint cover art, but a really decent album falling on the heels of a very strong debut record, which I already have and love quite a bit. This was produced by Max Norman, who handled the first three Ozzy Osbourne studio albums, but also records for Loudness and Sabotage. He even produced Act 3 for Death Angel. Anyways, I grabbed this one primarily to help fill out my 80s Armored Saint collection. And there are the Chrysalis labels there for you. And the back with the track listings. And if one Armored Saint album isn't enough, here's another. This is the third studio album from the band. It is Raising Fear, released in 1987 by Chrysalis Records. This is a gold stamp promo copy, which you can see right there. But also the labels are a little different than your usual Chrysalis labels. Pretty cool. So admittedly stronger Armored Saint album than the last. Also the final album with guitarist David Pritchard, who died of leukemia a few years later. Rest in peace, Dave. Anyways, love the title track, love Book of Blood, and others too. A strong release for the band, so definitely check this one out. And let's make this one a triple shot with Armored Saints' first live album. This is Saints Will Conquer, released in 1988 by Metal Blade Records. So just to be completely transparent here, I've never heard this live album. But I do love this era of the band, and I do dig live albums. This is actually a blind buy for me. Great track listing here, so definitely not going to be disappointed. And as implied before, I now have a complete run of 80s albums for this band, thanks to this haul. Definitely pretty cool. And also the labels, again. Uh, white labels, towards the end of the 80s there for Metal Blade. Next up is the debut studio album from American power metal band Tyrant. This is Legions of the Dead, released in 1985 by Bonsai Records, which means this is a Canadian pressing. So I remember liking this album back when it came out, but my memory of it musically is a little fuzzy. I am a big fan of their second album, Too Late to Pray, which I have and have shown on this channel before. Likewise with their 2020 album, Hereafter, great album. So now I'm missing their 1996 album, King of Kings. You can feel free to let me know if that's worth checking out. I haven't checked it out yet. As I mentioned, this one is on Bonsai and not Metal Blade, which isn't unusual here in northern Vermont as we're about 45 minutes from the Canadian border. So stuff from Bonsai and Attic and Cobra have made their way down here. Anyways, glad to have snagged this one. Next is a sixth studio album from Japanese heavy metal band Loudness. This is Lightning Strikes, released in 1986 by Akko Records. And this is also a promo copy. I don't think there's a gold stamp on it. There's not. There's your Akko labels right there. So this follows their incredibly successful Thunder in the East album, which I have and have loved since it came out. Killer band with the amazing guitarist Akira Takasaki. I do have a cursory familiarity with this album, notably with the lead single, Let It Go. I could have also snagged that copy of Hurricane Eyes that you probably saw, but I just didn't know that album very well, and I suspect from future records that this is when Loudness skittered more into hair metal territory, which for them doesn't really work for me. So I have a decent run of Loudness albums from the beginning to this one now, only missing their fourth album, Disillusion. Not bad. Next up is the one and only release from American drummer Mark Edwards. This is the Code of Honor EP, released in 1985 by Metal Blade Records. So my knowledge of Mark Edwards is basically limited to his time in Steeler, as in the LA one with Ron Keel and Yngwie Malmsteen. So both that and it being a Metal Blade release I wasn't really familiar with, my curiosity got the best of me, so I bought this. Hoping it's good. I guess I'll find out soon enough. It's the cover again with uh, 
metal blade labels there for you. Pretty cool. Next is a second studio album from American heavy metal band Jack Star's Burning Star. This is No Turning Back, released in 1986 by Napalm Records. And no, not that Napalm Records. It's Napalm Records. Anyway, so like Mark Edwards, my familiarity with Jack Star is from another band, namely his time in Virgin Steel. Speaking of Virgin Steel, there's a bit of an acrimonious story from way back then with Jack Star and David DeFay, which you can look up if you're interested. Anyways, if it's an 80s album with a guitar dude on it, I'll probably buy it. Since I also dig Virgin Steel's early material, that influenced my purchase as well. So we'll see how this one goes. Um, I should mention, in addition to the record, I also got the merch form, which is pretty amazing. So you get buttons and sweatshirts and all that stuff. Or you could, rather. I'm sure you can't get them anymore. Always nice to have the merch form when we get it. Next up is the debut studio album from American metal band Explorer. This is Symphonies of Steel, originally released in 1984, but reissued in 1986 by Metal Blade Records. So funny thing about this album is it actually had three different covers, as well as a slight name change during the time. They started with one X in their name and somehow felt that throwing in an additional X was cooler. Sure. Anyways, the 1984 cover from Hot Hard Heavy Records has one image. Then the 1985 Black Dragon Records has another, along with the altered name. And then this cover from Metal Blade in 1986 has yet another image. Yeah, not sure why the indecision on this one. But since it made its way to Metal Blade, it definitely got me curious, and so I bought this one. We'll see if it's any good. There's a track listing there as well. Pictures of the band. Pretty cool. Uh, also a cutout. You can see the corner there. Next is the debut studio album from American power metal band Damien. This is Every Dog Has Its Day, released in 1987 by Select Records. A label I know absolutely nothing about. But cool to have. Anyways, there are a number of bands with this name. These guys are from Ohio, and believe it or not, they're still around, having released a couple comps in 2018. They are power metal, though of the U.S. variety. Given everything, I feel this band must be somewhere in my wheelhouse, so this is why I bought it. Also, cool image. Next up is the second studio album from Swedish heavy metal band Overdrive. This is Swords and Axes, released in 1984 by Planet Records. Their labels there. Very nice labels for a metal band, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Anyways. Anyways, I've seen some folks briefly discuss this record on YouTube here and there and simply got curious about it as a result. Another band that's still around also released a comp, but in 2022. So definitely looking forward to hearing this one. Next is a compilation album from British metal band Saxon. This is Strong Arm Metal, released in 1984 by Career Records. And you're probably used to Career Records labels if you collect Saxon of any sort, especially the early stuff. There you go. Anyways, I already have the French pressing of this, but this UK pressing has this different cover art, so somehow I felt I needed the variant. I mean, you're probably used to the other one because you see it a lot more. It's the one with the brawny arm holding the sword. This one's clearly different. Uh, also, I do love Saxon. That's another reason why I snagged this. Since it is a comp, uh, there's not a lot to say about it other than it does cover the classic era of the band, clearly. So it's a good starting point if you're unfamiliar with them. So Saxon, Strong Arm Metal. Next up is another album from Saxon, this time their eighth studio album. This is Rock the Nations, released in 1986 by EMI. So this is the album right after Innocence is No Excuse, which is a bit of a dark horse for them, but I do dig it. I know after this album, Saxon takes some directional changes that I'm not as excited about, but it does get me closer to filling out the classic era of vinyl for them that I need. Still got to get the first and third albums, which I probably should stop tracking my feet on and just get. Anyways, I'm glad I grabbed this one, even if it isn't one of their stronger albums. Yeah, there's the label there for you. Nice and plain, but does the job. I do love the inner sleeve as well with the artwork there and lyrics and credits on the back very cool next is a 12 inch single from danish heavy metal band king diamond this is the family ghost released in 1987 by road racer records in case you need a nostalgia trip here for you beautiful road racer labels love it 
So classic era King Diamond is always going to grab my attention, and seeing this in the wild was way too tempting to pass up. In case you didn't know, The Family Ghost is a track from their second album, Abigail, released that same year. Family Ghost, great song. Also the B-side here, you get the track Shrine, which at the time was exclusive to the single, until the Dark Sides compilation came out the following year. Not much else to say here, I mean, great single, classic king. Next up is a compilation album from German hard rock band The Scorpions. This is Hot and Heavy, released in 1982 by RCA Records. So very old RCA labels there in turquoise for you. So this is definitely one of those releases you grab because you've actually never seen it before and likely will never see again. What's interesting here is that although the comp came out in 1982, the material was from 1977 and back when they had Uli John Roth in the band. So maybe because Blackout was doing so well at the time, the label decided to shop the old stuff to the new fans. Yeah, that's all I got. Anyways, cool comp that I'd never seen before, so I grabbed it. Next is a live EP from British heavy rock band Motorhead. This is The Golden Years, released in 1980 by Bronze Records. Of course, it's Motorhead, it's Bronze. At least the early stuff. There you go. It's like the Scorpions comp, I'd also never seen this one before. Plus it had the distinction of being classic era live material. Look, it's the same thing on both sides. So two reasons to grab it. This one is sandwiched between On Parole and Ace of Spades in terms of release, in case that helps. Only four tracks, but that's all right. Anyways, another good snag. Next up is the debut studio album from American thrash metal band Heathen. This is Breaking the Silence, released in 1987 by Combat Records. And since this is 1987, it is gray camo labels. I also did get the inner sleeve here. We got the full lyrics as well as credits and all of that. So this has definitely been on my wish list for a number of years, so finding a really clean copy in the wild was just incredible. I do have the 12-inch single for their cover of Set Me Free, originally by The Sweet. And I've had that single since my college radio days, but always wanted to grab the full album. Just dragged my feet on it for too long. But now I've got it, so all is well. You know, a lot of folks often forget about Heathen when the subject of classic Bay Area thrash comes up, and that's really a shame. I mean, this is a really good band, and their new stuff is really great, too, as I've talked about that in previous videos. Anyways, a definite grail acquired. One of two, actually. So let's talk about the other. Next is the debut studio album from Canadian thrash metal band Voivod. This is War and Pain, released in 1984 by Metal Blade Records. So finally have a somewhat OG release of this album. Technically, the first one had the Metal Blade Silver labels. This is a reissue from the same year, this time with the classic tan labels from the label. There was also a white label variant between the two. Ultimately, none of that matters to me. This is a very much loved album by me, and my cassette version of this has so many memories attached to it from the 1980s. So really, really glad to have this one. And even better, it still has the original insert in it with the requisite band collage, as well as full lyrics in the uh, handwriting of Drummer Away, of course, as usual. War and Pain, goddamn, I got it. Again, I want to thank Nate down at Bookspieler Records for letting me have first access to this amazing metal vinyl collection. If you're in the Montpelier, Vermont area, you should absolutely visit their shop. In fact, I also shot an episode of the Record Store Report on this store, which you should check out when you get the chance. Great shop, great guys who run it, and they have a pretty decent metal selection there as well. You should always check into that. Speaking of which, you should let me know which records you dug the most, either from the entire collection or just from the ones that I bought. Maybe you have some of these records already. You can let me know that too. And of course, anything else you want to say, you can leave that in the comments below. Of course, if you've never been to my channel before and you're thinking, hey, what's this all about? Well, my name is Matt. This is the Accusation Network, where each and every week I do videos on metal vinyl collecting, but also do videos on classic and modern metal in general. If you dig the sound of any or all of that, you should definitely give this video a like. Also, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And of course, share my videos with some of your friends on social media. If you're a long-term viewer, however, you might want to support me a little bit more, or consider that, rather, uh, on my Patreon account. I'm at patreon.com slash theaccusationnetwork. 
There I share videos up to seven days early, exclusively for patrons. Also do an exclusive radio show every month and a whole lot of other posts that are, again, exclusive to Patreon. Definitely check out the reward tiers and see how you can contribute. Definitely appreciate your support. And of course, thank you as always for watching and I'll see you in the next video.